Hey, second and third grade, how are you today? Um, let's see, it's been a week since I've talked to you guys last. So last time we worked on a quiz for chapters one through four um, covering Stuart Little. I hope that you guys did really well with it. And today we are gonna be reading chapter five. Now chapter five is titled Rescued. Um, this is a pretty long chapter uh, so I don't want to waste too much time. So without further ado, let's begin. Again, this is chapter five, and this is titled Rescued. So follow along with me. George was in favor of ripping up the pantry floor. He ran and got his hammer, his screwdriver, and an ice pick. I'll have this old floor up in double quick time, he said, inserting his screwdriver under the edge of the first board and giving a good, vigorous pry. Vigorous, just so you know, means with energy. Vigorous pry. He will not rip up this floor till we have a good search, announced Mr. Little. That's final, George. You can put that hammer away where you got it. Oh, all right, said George. I see that nobody in this house cares anything about Stuart but me. And just a quick review. Last time, we, as we read chapter four, Stuart, um, is stuck in um, that little hole and it seems like nobody can get him out. So they're trying to do that right now. Mrs. Little began to cry. My poor dear little son, she said. I know he'll get wedged somewhere. Just because you can't travel comfortably in a mouse hole doesn't mean that it isn't a perfectly suitable place for Stuart, said Mr. Little. Just don't get yourself all worked up. Maybe we ought to lower some food to him, suggested George. That's what the state police did when a man got stuck in a cave. George darted into the kitchen and came running back with a dish of applesauce. He can pour some of this in and we will run to where he is. George spooned out a bit of the applesauce and started to poke it into the hole. Stop that, bellowed Mr. Little. George, Will you kindly let me handle this situation? Put that applesauce away immediately. Mr. George gla glared fiercely. Mr. Little glared fiercely at George. I was just trying to help my brother, said George, shaking his head as he carried the sauce back to the kitchen. Let's all call the steward, suggested Mrs. Little. It is quite possible that the mouse hole branches and twists about and that he has lost his way. Very well, said Mr. Little. I will count to three and we will all call. Then we will all keep perfectly quiet for three seconds, listening for the answer. He took out his watch. Mr. and Mrs. Little and George got down on their hands and knees and put their mouths as close as possible to the mouse hole. Then they all called, Stewart! And then, and then they all kept perfectly still for three seconds. Got to turn the page here. All right, here we go. Again, said Mr. Little. One, two, three. Stewart! It was no use. No one, no answer was heard. Mrs. Little went up to her bedroom, lay down, and sobbed. Ooh. Mr. Little went to the telephone and called up the Bureau of Missing Persons. But when the man asked for a description of Stuart and was told that he was only two inches high, he hung up in disgust. Disgust, uh, it's, it means basically when you're disgusted with something, it means that you're not very happy. Uh, George, meantime, went down went down cellar and hunted around to see if he could find the other entrance to the mouse hole. He moved a great many trunks, suitcases, flower pots, baskets, boxes, and broken chairs from one end of the cellar to the other in order to get to the section of wall, which he thought was likeliest, but found no hole. He did, however, come across an old discarded rowing machine of Mr. Little's and became interested in this carried it upstairs with some difficulty, and spent the rest of the morning rowing. A rowing machine is basically that machine where you sit down, you have both your hands um, on a bar, and you just pull back and forth. 
it's a rowing machine. It's kind of kind of like uh, rowing a boat. So if you had both handles where you're rowing, uh, it's the same kind of motion. When lunchtime came, everybody had forgotten about breakfast. All three sat down to a lamb stew, which Mr. Little, with which Mrs. Little had prepared. But it was a sad meal. Each one trying not to stare at the small empty chair, which Stuart always occupied, right next to Mrs. Little's glass of water. No one could eat. So great was the sorrow. Sorrow is another word for uh, being sad. So they're sad. George ate a bit of dessert, but nothing else. When lunch was over, Mrs. Little broke out crying again, and she thought she, she said she thought Stuart must be dead. Nonsense! Nonsense, growled Mr. Little. If he's dead, said George, we ought to pull down the shades all through the house. And he raced to the windows and began pulling down the shades. Wow, this is pretty sad. George, shouted Mr. Little in an exasperated tone. That means irritated or tired, an exasperated tone. If you don't stop acting like, stop acting in idiotic fashion, I will have to punish you. Uh-oh. We are having enough trouble today without having to cope with your foolishness. But George had already run into the living room and begun to darken it to show respect for the dead. They must really think they're not going to be able to find him. What do you guys think? Pause. You can ask your family. What do you guys think? Do you think they're going to find Stuart or not? I have a pretty good idea of what's going to happen. But that's just me. Um, anyway, he pulled a cord and out dropped Stuart onto the windowsill. <gasps> Well, for the love of Pete, said George, look who's here, Mom. It's about time somebody pulled down that shade, remarked Stuart. That's all I can say. He was quite weak and hungry. So Stuart wasn't in the hole. He was in the window shade, after all, which is um, where his little kitten friend knew he was all along. Probably a big surprise for the family. Anyway, Mrs. Little was so overjoyed to see him that she kept on crying. Of course. Everybody wanted to know what had happened. It was simply an accident that might happen to anybody, said Stuart. As for my hat and cane being found at the entrance to the mouse hole, you can draw your own conclusions. So, boys and girls, that is the end of Chapter 5. What do you think? Aren't you happy that they found Stuart? Wow, that was, uh, that was pretty uh, intense with the family. Uh, they probably didn't think they were going to be able to find him, but luckily they did as there's going to be a lot more in store for what's going to happen to Stuart and his adventures. Um, so, boys and girls, for next time, we are going to read Chapter 6. I hope that you guys had a good time reading along with me. Uh, I hope that school's going well for you guys. I know it's an adjustment learning how to do your schoolwork online, but I'm sure that you guys are doing a very good job. So, be healthy. Uh, make sure that you're getting lots of exercise, make sure that you're spending lots of time with your family, and make sure that you are doing the best you can with school. So guys, see you next week. Bye!